Hi guys, I want to talk about ancient arts today. I want to talk about classical art. So we've talked about the before, of course. We've talked about prehistory, the Paleolithic, the Upper Paleolithic, the Neolithic, Stonehenge, etc. Um, we said that history is, begins with the invention of writing five, 6,000 years ago, Mesopotamia and Egypt. And now we move on to the ancient Near East, Egypt, the Aegean, Greece, Etrusia, Rome. Um, and actually, I'm just going to talk about uh, Greece and Rome. These other places are really interesting. I'm sure you probably know a fair bit about Egypt and are probably curious to know more. But I want to talk about Greece and Rome, which is really kind of the heart of classical art and so enormously influences um, who and what we have been for the last 2,000 years and, and are today. If you think about... Um, you know, uh, somebody you're dating or a best friend and you love all the same music that they do and you go all the same places they go and then maybe you break up and it's like you hate all the music that they like and you hate all the places they go to. And if, if, if that would be true, then in a sense, you know, when you were friends or dating or whatever, it's like you were maybe defined by them. And now that you've broken up, you're still defined by them because you're doing the opposite. And for 2,000 years, that's been our relationship to the classical. We were often embracing the classical. There's a neoclassical revival. Other times, we reject the classical. We think about other things, but we kind of have really always been in resonance with the classical. So let's think a little bit about uh, Greece in this you know, quick talk, and then we'll think a little bit about Rome in the next one. Okay. So... Um, We've got this geometric period, this Greek vase. Let me say something really quick. I probably won't be that quick. <laughs> um, I think for me, in many ways, art and science are related. The artist and the scientist are two people more than probably any others in our culture who have the task of asking questions. Lots of people have the task of finding answers, right? Public policy makers, uh, politicians, doctors, nurses, lawyers, all these people have to solve things. But before you can solve things, we need people like artists and scientists to ask questions. Some people think art is controversial. Um, I think it's just that art pulls the rug out from under a lot of our assumptions, and it's uncomfortable, right? I mean, I've got my sexy iPod or my Android phone. It's just like so much fun. I love it. And you know, now you're coming along and telling me, well, you know, it's made out of conflict animal conflict minerals and people in Africa are dying because of the ingredients in your phone and it's assembled in like iPod City in China in these terrible working conditions people are committing suicide jumping off the roof and you know it's like I didn't want I, I didn't want to know I just wanted to have my phone and be fun and happy I didn't want to know about the global impact of my lifestyle um, so analogously artists and scientists often ask awkward questions so in many ways art and science are alike. But one way that I think they're very different is that science kind of builds like a ladder, right? That, that incredible phone we have today is the result of so many generations of technology before it. Art, on the other hand, um, doesn't so much build like a ladder as it is a reflection of the culture of the time. So there are incredible artists today working in all kinds of new media. There are incredible artists today working in all kinds of traditional media. But one thing that I think is true is that, that nobody alive today can create a better Greek vase than this one from 3,000 almost years ago. Um, it is the perfect representation of this form and its resonance with the culture of the time. So, you know, all of the art through the ages isn't quite a ladder in the same way that science is. It is sort of the pinnacle of its moment in our expression of that. Okay, so. Um, so here's this Koros youth, for example. And as long as I'm riffing on that point, let's just go forward and look at this Kratos boy. So this is 480 BCE, and this is, you know, about 590 BCE, so pretty much 100 years. And this is a geometric period, and this is a much more representational period. So we could say, wow, look at from that kind of crude form, how they progressed to this lifelike form with the contrapposto, the way the weight is carried, is, is incredible, 100 years. But we, you know, what if they came the opposite direction? And this was the earlier one, and, and we could say, wow, yeah, all they could do is just like mimic what the human body already looks like. There was no expression. But then look, 100 years later, wow, they've really like embraced 
this thing and made it their own. So you could invert the narrative. And so we often do look at the progression of art and think that it goes from the quote unquote primitive to the more realistic and representational. But, you know, who's to say that the realistic and representational is the goal or the ultimate form of art? You know, maybe the more abstract and expressive is where we'd like to be. Anyway, so we've now looked at two, piece, two pieces of sculpture. Um, but as we move into this classical time period, um, these are all the people, all the names you're so familiar with, the playwrights, um, Sophocles, Euripides, Aristophanes, the philosophers, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. Again, this is really the seat, the heart, the, the foundation of Western culture that's so um, powerful for us today. Um, so I'll just show you Zeus just to be cheeky. So this is a beautiful sculpture uh, of Zeus or Poseidon, even without the spear or whatever he was holding. But I just, uh, I'm just showing you because of the cheeky photo. And as long as we're being silly, here's your quick, quick student class notes for Zeus, Poseidon, Hera, Hades. Um, okay. Um, so here's the Acropolis. Beautiful city on a hill, right? Here's the Getty Center out in Westwood. Do you think this, uh, this classical uh, architecture, this classical campus is influencing the way we shape space today? Hmm. Here's the Parthenon. Here's the United States Supreme Court. So, And oh, as long as back on the cheeky side. So here's a, a, a really well known 2,500 year old sculpture, and I will let you poke on your own and figure out what these um, silly pictures are about. But anyway, um, back on this idea of the classical influencing the contemporary. Um, and then here, you know, is again this this kind of classical elegance, which is, the, you know, the lighting as much as the remarkable sculpture. But um, yeah, this is where so much of our aesthetics and, and values and cultural iconography comes from, um, whether it's building buildings. If you go to Sacramento, you know, you're going to find similar kinds of architecture. So that's a quick peek at uh, ancient Greece. And in the next one, we'll, we'll say a few words about ancient Rome. <laughs>